Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Call Bank Sports, where we will do our best to not talk about trading Mike Conley, um, <laughs> which I feel like is pretty much the only topic of conversation around the Utah Jazz right now. And other than the fact that while Lonzo Ball intrigues me, I still need someone to justify to me why, um, you know, Mike Conley would want to sign to the Jazz to do a sign and trade to New Orleans. Uh, so... Don't know why he'd want to end up there, but that, that's besides the point. We're going to be going over a Deseret News article today written by Sarah Todd, um, on, and it's entitled, How Did Jazz Players Rate in the 2021 Season? Um, jazz Beat Writer Shares Her Grades. So she's going to grade each individual player, um, whether it be the starter or the bench, and kind of go through her explanation. So we've looking through, we've, took it, we've taken a look through it. And there's definitely some disagreements that we have. So if you want to follow along, you can pull that up and let's get started. Yeah, and we'll, we'll leave the link in the description so you don't have to search it up. But um, I I don't know how, I, I guess I can share the grade. Nate, you can give your initial opinion and then I'll I'll share whether I agree with you or not. Okay. Um, I'm guessing this first one will be pretty quick. Donovan <laughs> Mitchell, she gave him an A. Um I don't know. Do you have any disagreement there? No, I mean, this was Donovan Mitchell's best um, season of his career. Like, it was disappointing to see him get injured against the Clippers and disappointing to see him get injured against Indiana. But, like, that doesn't take away from his body of work. And he still, like, put his heart and soul out on the floor, which doesn't always mean you should get an A. But just the amount of passion I've seen from Donovan this year, like, he deserves an A. He's going to come back. In, from next off season, even better. And I honestly think we could see Donovan Mitchell average 30 plus this next year. So, I mean, if this season's an A, then I think there's a chance next season's an A plus. That, I think he was pretty close to an A plus this season. If it weren't for the yeah. injuries and he was, was able to stay consistent, I bet he would have been. Um, And, and so next, obviously the co-star, or I don't even know if co-stars are a thing anymore. Uh, but the the anchor of the defense, Rudy Gobert, she gave him an A minus. Um, I think that's an interesting one. Whether I feel like he's anywhere in the range from B plus to A, depending on how you look at it. But what are your thoughts there? Yeah. So if you're giving Rudy Gobert an A minus, I feel like you're giving Rudy Gobert an A minus because you said he can't guard the paint, you know, like the best defensive player in the world, and guard the perimeter like the best defensive player in the world. Um. And that's not entirely the whole thing. Like, obviously, we would love to see Rudy Gobert be able to post up more. So if you're looking at him as a center as a whole, um, his lack of ability to be able to solidly guard the perimeter while still guarding the paint, which I feel like you can't really expect. I mean, he's honestly very good for a center at guarding the perimeter. And what hurt the Jazz more was not having a secondary rim protector so i feel like gobert when it really comes down to it if you're if i'm giving him an a minus i'm giving him an a minus for the offensive end and not being able to post up and create for his uh, on his own since he needs a bit more help on the jazz defensive end and i can't discount what he does on that end of the court um at all but i can say if he was able to post up a bit more which requires him to kind of change his muscle composition and how does that impact him on the defensive end that I'd give him an A. So we'll, we'll yeah. see where he comes back. I think the offensive end is really where the Jazz want to see him improve. Yeah, as as far as what he does, I think he did what he does best at an A level. Like the, the probably not an A plus this year. I don't know. But he was a great defender. I think his offense did improve. Um it's obviously not as great as we'd like it, but he's like still the best defending center in the league. I don't know if he was the best rebounder this year, but he was up there. And yeah. I think I think it's just the Clippers series why he got that A minus in this article. And I agree with you. I don't think that was his fault. I think that was the Jazz didn't have good enough perimeter defense, um, which we'll, we'll talk about more when we get to Royce O'Neal. I'm sure because he's the best perimeter def defender, and he had a like. He had a rough season, not well, and we'll get into that. But he had to defend yeah. the primary defend, the best offensive player, night and night out. Um, so 
Yeah, with with Conley, we he, we got another A minus, which I think this is an interesting one. I think an A minus is a pretty good grade. So I'm not going to like argue hard, but uh, against it. But what are your thoughts? So my thought is, is I have a really hard time giving him an A minus when somebody else, when a couple of other players down the list got an A. So, so that's where I'm kind of drawing the line is if I had to put these relative to each other, I'm not giving Conley an A minus because if we're giving him an A minus, I feel like we're giving him an A minus for hamstring health saying that because his hamstring health wasn't great, like he got an A minus, which can be a fair reason to like give him a lower grade because of the lack of dependability there. But this is arguably the best season of his career. Um, he was a great creator and I truly believe if he stays healthy um, and it still would have been a struggle for the jazz to beat the Clippers, but I do think they could have done it. Um, and again, beating the Suns would have been a struggle, but I, I could honestly see the conversation that people are having about Chris Paul right now in the NBA finals um, being about Mike Conley had the jazz got there. Like he had that special of a year that sadly was marred by his hamstring. Um, and just kind of that being the giant, what if for jazz fans, um, a- along with Donovan Mitchell's ankle, like if he, you know, if he doesn't tweak that in game five and retweak it again, when trying to come back in the series, do the jazz end up, you know, winning in six or seven games and being able to move on. So I, I, per- I mean, he shot over 40% from three, if I remember correctly, he was a great creator, absolute, be- absolutely beautiful piece to have beside Donovan Mitchell. The one issue is maybe his size in the backcourt, but I, the I, I think an A minus is an okay grade if other players down the list didn't have an A. In this, like having Mike Conley this season, because like last season when we had him, he was he just wasn't playing like himself. He was hurt. He was hurt again this season. But yeah. I agree with you. He was exactly what the Jazz needed. He brought that great basketball IQ, that ball handling, that three point shooting. Um, good defense, and so it's like it's like when we, he brought everything Rubio did, except for he could score and Rubio couldn't. So yeah. that that really helped the Jazz offense there. And I agree. Like I I think it's fair to give him an A minus because of injuries, even though like a lot of times that's not something you can't control. But it's it's like that cheesy phrase everyone says: the best ability is availability. So because I'm not it's against. So true. Yeah. I'm not like against so knocking cheesy. a player a little bit for, for injuries, but I, I think when he was playing, he was playing at an A level this season. Yeah. Okay. So so here's and, where my issues come in. Th- this yeah. next one right here. And I'll let you give your first reaction. So Bojan Bogdanovic had a pretty good year, especially coming off of, of hand surgery. Um, He had, he got an A. He was given an A here. So that's kind of where I'm like, but but I'll let you talk first. Yeah, I think I think it's it's tough grading Bojan because he had his flashes, and when Bojan's at his best, he is one of the most lethal scorers. And, yeah, and that and that can just happen just from the three point line. He can go off, and that happened several times uh, this season, including the playoffs. But I feel like most of the season he was just kind of coasting. He was he was doing okay. He was hitting threes at a good rate, but like he had some off nights. Like I don't, I don't know what his full season stats are. Like I'm sure his three point percentage was great, but as an overall, I feel like he could have played better. And I don't know if that's an argument that maybe Mitchell and Conley were taking too many of the touches that he could never do that night in night out. But I don't think he deserved an A. I feel like his season was probably closer to a B plus. Uh, And it would have been a B if he didn't have some of those incredible games this season. Yeah, I agree with you on that, right? Like um, his role definitely changed between the last two seasons since as Mike began um, being more involved in the offense and getting more touches, there's just less touches for Bojan. Um, And he ended up shooting 39% from three, which is his lowest percentage since 20, the 2016, 2017 season. Um, In 2016, 2017. Oh, okay. So when he was with Washington, the latter half of 2016, 2017, he shot just over 39%. So kind of had, you know, a bit worse shooting from three, like 
than the last couple seasons when he's been over 40, but it was still a really good year. Um, but if you're taking points away from Conley for, you know, from Conley and Gobert, I just don't think Bogdanovich had an A. And, and I agree with you kind of in the more B, B plus range, just because he was, you know, the third or fourth option. And by the time you're at that point, I don't really, maybe he gets an A in his role, but definitely not an A in comparison to the other players. Yeah. And if, I feel like, like I'm okay. Cause there's some deep bench players that barely got minutes that had pretty high grades and I'm yeah. okay grading them in their roles. In this case, Bojan, he's the kind of guy where we were hoping he's a 20 plus point per night kind of scorer. And he just wasn't that this season. So I, I feel like when you're a starter, you need to be graded overall. And then once you get into the bench, you can start getting graded for your role. That's kind of how I feel. Um, yeah. Except except for maybe in this case, which is the last starter. And he's kind of a special case with Royce O'Neal. He's, he's not there for scoring. He can hit a three when he's open. Um, he's there, really there for defense and and kind of just energy i obviously he wasn't a perfect player the grade he got here was a b i have a lot of thoughts of it but on it on his overall season because there's a lot of good there was also a lot of like mediocre and some bad so wh- yeah. what are your thoughts like you think b sums it up well or uh, does he deserve something better or worse see i definitely have those mixed feelings here with you uh, as um as well as you do because right like he is definitely the fourth or fifth option when you look at starters um on the offensive end right but he's always guarding the best player night in and night out which just takes a physical toll and so you look at this season where i mean he played 71 games he took one game off i believe that that was the lakers game that the jazz barely lost in overtime um the day right after Donovan Mitchell hurt his ankle. So, I mean, he played 71 games. He averaged 31.6 minutes. Like, he was out on the court a lot this season. So, that's going to take a toll. It is only his fourth year in the league. He did, however, come out, come into the NBA older, so he's 27. And, like, yes, we really want him to be better on the offensive end, but who is he taking touches from? We want him to be better on the defensive end, even though he's really good. But can you really expect him to be better unless you give him another, you know, three to four inches to take him from six four <laughs> to six eight? So, well, obviously, I would love to upgrade Royce O'Neal. Um, when you look at how much money Royce O'Neal is making, which I can't remember off the top of my head, let me pull that up really quick. Like in the um, eight million range, I think. million like that's pretty good for what you're getting from him like I don't know if you're going to be able to find a a, like a solid improvement for cheaper um, than him right now but obviously it's a spot where if the Jazz could improve at power forward and get some more length on the court get a secondary rim defender you know that that would be a positive for them yeah I think for what he is he did a great job I don't think he's the kind of player that should be expected to guard the the best player on the other team every night um and and so it's like i think he had a rough season he did a really good job at a role that he probably shouldn't be in um so on that side um, because of that i feel like he should have maybe a b plus or a minus just looking at that part of things because i think he did really good even though that's not a role he should be in on the offensive end I agree with you. He shouldn't be taking too many of those touches, but I also feel like he should like, there are times where he just hesitant to shoot. He had a wide open three. No one was even coming to defend him and he passed the ball. No, Um, he does need to improve at all at taking threes when he has open shots. Um, He definitely has had his stretches. He shot just over 39% um, come the end of the season. What what was the exact? Oh, sorry, just under. He shot thirty eight point five percent, which is the second highest season in his career, behind when he shot thirty eight point six in eighteen nineteen. Um, the difference there is he only started sixteen games, and he was averaging point eight attempts a game, as opposed to one point five. So, I mean, he's averaging the most three pointers 
of his career right now. Mm -hmm. And there was definitely room for improvement. And again, like if the jazz were able to upgrade him, that would be awesome. Um, I just don't know if you're going to find a player who fills the role that he has better. And like, I I mean, for that price, there's some crazy trades you could get into. And the Mavs would love, you know, if we traded Mike Conley for Chris Stapps for Zingas, you know, (laughs) but that that's not happening. Like, if KP all of a sudden came back and became what he could become, what what everyone thought he would, that could maybe be a great trade for the Jazz, but it didn't work out in New York and it didn't work out in Dallas. So I, I don't think anyone's taking a flyer on him anytime soon. Yeah, and not to get... I don't think the Jazz will trade Royce O'Neal, but I, I don't want to like be too hard on him either because he's like... Yeah. His kind of player is the kind of player that so many other teams are looking for. A player who can knock down open threes, who is a great perimeter defender, and there's not many like him. So I'm glad he's on the Jazz. I just wish he had a little bit of help on the defensive end as far as the overall roster. And obviously Um, this is an expensive upgrade, but think if you had someone, maybe not Paul George level, but like if Bojan was a better defender, you know, and better at protecting the rim at his 6'8", and all of a sudden you slide Bojan into that power forward role and he's guarding the main guy and then you put Royce O'Neal on the secondary guy because Royce O'Neal is a really good defender and what that does for the Jazz. Now, obviously, you now have, you know, an all-star point guard, an all-star shooting guard, an all-star center and an all-star power forward (laughs) in, in your roster, which is why, like, talking about upgrading the Jazz Um, starters is so hard because what are people asking for? They're asking for a fourth all-star to start on, to start. Like how many teams have ever had four all-stars in the starting five? That's crazy. Yeah. And I I don't want to spend too much on time on this because we have to get to the bench, but yeah, Bojan, when he played against Kawhi before Kawhi got hurt, like he was an incredible defender. I've never, I've not seen many people defend Kawhi Leonard like that, and so I'm like, where is that the entire season? If, if we could get that consistently from Bojan, uh, yeah, that that could have been it, huge. It did feel like that was the first two games, and then like I don't know if he got tired or what of doing it, but he just wasn't as good when they went to Los Angeles, and maybe the crowd, and you know, may, since. He, Kawhi never came back after to every Utah, play, yeah. so I wonder how much the home crowd was helping him be able to do that to that level. But like you said, we need to get to the bench. So first one on the bench, Jordan Clarkson, sixth man of the year, got an A. Um, I feel like there is some nitpicking um, that you could do about Jordan Clarkson. He isn't as efficient as I would like, but his goal is like to bring the heart. He um, obviously deserved the sixth man of the year and like, I'm fine giving him an A. I, I don't think there's a lot of debate on that one. Yeah, like everyone knows his negatives. He's not efficient. Um, yeah. And, and there were some times where he just couldn't buy a shot. But overall, I think he was an A. Um, yeah. I'm not going to argue that one too bad. I, I do feel like people are still looking at the first 25 games of the season. And once you start looking at the last, like, you know, 47. You, you start realizing that he started off amazing and still deserves a lot of credit. But this is where, like, this is where I've got to be honest, the whole article just starts to make me question everything. Like, um, the seventh man of the year, Joe Ingles, um, got a C plus. So Joe, just, just, just hear me out. Had one of the best three point shooting seasons in NBA history. And I, I can't remember where it landed exactly, but would have had a much better percentage had Mike Conley and Donovan Mitchell not been out for like the last 12 to 15 games of the season. And he had to take over the starting point guard role. Now, remember when he took over the starting point guard role, the jazz did pretty well. Like they were able to hold on to the one seed when it really looked like the Suns were going to take it away from them. Um, so he did really well. And Yes, he might have had some shortcomings and might have been lackluster at times. But this is where I feel like the start of the season determined how we feel about Jordan Clarkson and Joe Ingles. 
because yeah. I feel like Joe had Donovan and Conley not got hurt would have deserved the six man of the year award more than Jordan, but Jordan still would have got it because he had all of the cred from the first 20 games. Yeah. And I, I feel like this grade is, it's almost like, cause a lot of the explanation is like you talked about him not being the greatest point guard, but I feel like if you're expecting him to be Mike Conley, then sure. Maybe he was a C plus. Yeah. You can't expect him to be Mike Conley. Mike Conley's, one of the best point guards in the league. Um, and that that's, and obviously there's a lot of great point guards in this league, but he's so like Joe Ingles is not that Joe Ingles will never be that. But like you said, he's a great three point shooter. He's a great energy guy. I feel like a lot of the intangible stuff that you can't really measure. Like he, like a lot of teams talk about how they need a bruiser on the team in the playoffs. Joe Ingles is kind of the jazz. the closest we have. He's our bruiser. <laughs> like, except for he, he won't Oz beat you up. He'll, he'll just, he's just not fun to play against because he's always talking in your ear. Um, yeah. And then he'll hit a three in your face. So, so that's I don't know, I don't know what I would give him. I think, I think at the lowest I would give him a B. And I don't know if I'd go into the A minus A range, but I think he's B, B plus range this yeah. season. And that's where the disconnect is for me that Joe got a C plus and Jordan got an A. And, you know, when you're give first of all, like you said, B, B plus is where Joe should be. And at that point, if you're giving Joe a B, B plus, but you're giving Jordan an A, I feel like you basically have to say we rounded at the end. And we said that if you, um, you know, if you got an A on your final, you get an A in the class. Like that, that's the logic and Jordan got the sixth man of the year. So instead of, you know, getting maybe that B plus a minus that he deserved, if you get the sixth man of the year, you get an A in the that's, class. That's 10% extra credit right there. 10%. That, that's seriously what I feel like it kind of ended up being. Um, Derek favors got a C and I can, I, I understand that. Um, we were talking about Derek Favors as being just this amazing signing at the beginning of uh, the we, season. We hyped him up a little too much on this channel. And I personally still feel like had he came out and played like he played a couple years ago in Utah, um, that it would have been awesome. Like he definitely played his heart out in Memf in the Memphis series and helped the Jazz out a lot there. Especially when Rudy got into foul trouble in game one. Like he was a highlight there, but we are paying him a lot of money to be a backup center that this season wasn't that effective. Now is part of it because Derek needs his rest and which is hard to say when he's only playing 12 minutes a night, but it or 16, 12 to 16 minutes a night, but is, I mean, in this, he will have a shortened off season, but in a more regular, regular season, Will he have enough rest to possibly improve a bit? And that's kind of where I'm looking at. Like, he could be better with more rest this upcoming season. Yeah. and uh, But looking at the season, I don't, I think he always gave his effort. Like, he, he was a great effort guy. Yeah. Um, and, and he had big shoes to fill because he was trying to hold the fort while Gobert was on the bench. So that that's not easy to do, especially when the whole defense is based around having a great rim protector there. Um, but just otherwise, he he's one of those players where most games he's out there for his like 15 minutes or whatever. Yeah. And you don't really notice him. He he maybe grabs a handful of rebounds. He maybe scores once or twice, but he he doesn't really do anything to change the game. He doesn't impact the game a ton. So I feel like a C is fair. I may go a little bit higher with him just because of the effort. But uh, that was my main concern is like, even though he, he wasn't doing bad, he wasn't necessarily doing good either. It, it's kind of how I saw his season. Yeah. So, so here's kind of the one thing that really hurts Derek, right? Is Gobert is so good at protecting the rim. That when he leaves the floor, no matter how good of a rim protector Derek Favors is, is the opposing team is going to attack him because they need something in the paint. They need something. This is their only chance because they know in two minutes Gobert's coming back and they can't get anything. 
So we have seen a couple of times this year where Rudy Gobert is so good that it has hurt the Jazz. The Jazz are so good at guarding the pick and roll that the Clippers literally stopped running the pick and roll. They stopped running it, which all of a sudden put the Jazz in a position where Rudy Gobert was so good that it hurt them because the Clippers weren't running the pick and roll anymore. And when Derek is on the floor, Rudy is so good that the other teams feel like they have to get into the paint no matter what. And that hurts Derek because Rudy Gobert is so good. And you can let me know what you feel about how you feel about that in the comments. Um, I, I don't know how hot <laughs> of a take that is, but we've got a few more bench players. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll go through the bench. There's some non-rotation guys at the end, but we'll, I think we'll end at the end of the bench. So George Niang got a B minus. Um, I feel like this is fair. He's the ninth guy on the road. Well, he's the eighth or so guy ninth on the rotation and he does a really good job at what he needs to be out there for. He can hit a three. Um, he can play some lockdown defense like for being where he's at and for what he gets paid. I feel like George Niang is an A. Um, right. if, obviously, if, you can, if, if you talk about value per dollar, he's probably the best score on the team. Yeah, like seriously. So nothing but love for Royce O'Neal. He does need to improve. He does need to be more willing to take an open three at times. Um, but really, like, what do you expect from the guy who gets 12? Like, I mean, how many minutes does George Niang get? I can take a look at that really quick if you want to give some more thoughts on him. Yeah, uh, obviously, like the highlight of his season was when he just how many points did, and he hit like, I don't know, like six threes in a row that one game. That um, was uh, that was that the Charlotte game? I feel like it. I, I was there. So. That I, was awesome. The, the, I I didn't know. I did the post game and I didn't know what to say. I was like, I, I was like, if I had a thousand predictions for this game, this probably wouldn't have been one of them. Is Georgie Niang going off? Um, yeah. But I think I think he's he's a. I don't know if I want to call him a glue guy, but I think he's he's just one of those guys that he fits into the rotation. He does his job. And at, at what we're paying him, he doesn't hurt the cap at all. So I don't think there's, I feel like B minus isn't a bad rating for him. I'd probably want to give him at least a B though. Um, yeah. But it's just like he ha didn't have a ton of minutes. It wasn't like every time he came in, like he changed the game. If, if he was that way, he would have been starting. But I feel like, I don't know. He, he definitely has some room to improve. Maybe get a little bit more athletic. Um, get a little bit uh, quicker release on his three. So he shoots them a little bit more often. Um, and then if that, like he could turn into like a six man kind of player or starter in the next couple of seasons, if he can work on those things. Yeah. He averaged 16 minutes a game, which is two more minutes than last year. Um, when he averaged 14, a lot of that has to do though, with the time that both Mike and um, Donovan were out where he started 10 games. So I, like, yeah, he does a really good job off the bench. And again, it would be awesome to upgrade him there, but you only have so much salary cap that you can use. And who are you going to get that's better than him to play 14 minutes a game? Um, it is really the question you kind of have to ask, right? Like, yeah, you can find someone who's better than him, but do they actually want to play in his role? So the last one is Mia Oni with a C. Um, I have a hard time giving him a C because really how much did he play? Um, like, yes, he's not that great from three and there's a lot of high hopes there. Are we going to see him getting more minutes this next season? I don't know, but I really feel like I have a hard time. Like, I don't feel like Mia only played enough to be considered a rotation player and get graded on the rotation player list. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, it's tough to grade those players that don't get a ton of minutes. He was yeah. really only playing when someone was hurt. Um, and on this list, I, I don't think we're going to go all the way down to the non-rotation players and talk about all of them. Yeah. I did want to talk about Brantley, though, because he was getting okay. some minutes, especially when people were hurt. And so Oni got a C, Brantley got a B plus. I think it's kind of fair to talk about them and compare, like... Because they they play similar positions, 
And and it's like posi- positionless basketball right now. So like you never really know what position someone is unless they're a star. Um, but I liked a lot what I saw from Brantley. Um, he was exactly what I wanted from that guy who like gets minutes occasionally and he brings in the energy and he tries to like make every single moment count because he knows he's trying to prove something. That's what I was seeing from Brantley. Oni, I don't think he, he was another one of those players where I didn't think he was bad, but I thought. He just he just kind of like melted into everything and like we didn't he didn't really do a ton he just tried to play in the system which isn't a bad thing but it's like when he's in he's obviously not as good as his replacement so when he's just trying to play into the system and not really play to his strengths as much I don't think I I feel like with these players you don't want them to fit into the system as much you want them to stand out a little bit more that way they have a specific strength that you can use at certain times. Uh, Because otherwise it's just a downgrade whenever they come in. Um, I don't know if that made any sense, but uh, I'd like to see Brantley more next season over Oni is kind of my thoughts from what I saw from both of them this season. Yeah, I mean, they're both 6'5". They're both just... um, Brantley is 6'5", 250, um, compared to Mia only 6'5", 206. Um, (laughs) So there's a bit of a definitely a frame difference there. Yeah, there's definitely a lot. Like, I'd love to see them maybe get some more time. Um, and, like, maybe one of them is an upgrade from George Niang. I think the biggest issue now is you're definitely sacrificing regular season wins there. And will that transition to having a better team in the offseason with a worse seed? And that's kind of sounds like where, um, where um, Lindsay and Snyder had some differences is like, how much do you incorporate these bench guys? And that's kind of hard. Like, I don't expect to see Oni or Brantley all of a sudden become key pieces for the Jazz. Well, I do think that maybe, like, in two or three seasons, that could be best for the Jazz. It's not what's best for the Jazz next season. And and, so and the Jazz you, are very win now. Yeah, right now. and if you end up losing Mike Conley, when you look at the fact that you have two more years with Bogdanovich that you have four or five more years with both Gobert and with Donovan. Um, do you kind of say, you know, let's try to build up some of our D league guys, get them in the rotation more and try to be like peaking next season instead of this season. And I only see that happening if you lose Mike Conley. So I I'm intrigued. I know deal. And I have kind of rambled this episode, but, and we said we weren't going to talk about Mike Conley that much. But, again, <laughs> it all comes back to what happens with Mike Conley. Like, that is the Utah Jazz's offseason is, is Mike Conley traded. So, I don't know. Let us know what you think about the grades. Um, We'll be back at you next week with an episode. <laughs> and we'll see where this goes. This is a really interesting offseason for the Utah Jazz where I don't think a lot is going to happen. Yeah, probably not. There's not a ton we can do unless we start trading players, which we we just went through every single player. Uh, who who are we going to trade and who's going to bring better value? Maybe there's a couple trades out there that make sense, but it's not like there's just hundreds of trades that we could do. I, I feel like it'd be a very calculated yeah. trade and it'd be tough to find one that works. The Jazz will be shopping everyone but Gobert, um, Donovan, and Mike if he's re-signed. Like everyone else is going to be shopped around whether or not they leave is the, is definitely a fair question, but they will be shopped around. So, yeah, and I think that's fair, fair on the jazz end. That's what they awesome. need to do right now. Okay. Well, we will come more. Ta- we will, sorry, <laughs> scatterbrain today. We will talk to you more next week. Thank you so much for getting to this point and listening to us ramble. So leave a like comment, subscribe and go jazz.